Hello and welcome to Anaga Agony Aunt's Liver Anti University. Can everyone hear us all right? <laughs> Thank you. So, um, a lot of people here don't seem to necessarily have heard of what we do before, so I'm gonna, we're going to give a brief kind of rundown of what the project is before we start. Yeah. Am I, should I do that? Yeah. Okay. So, Anaga Agony Aunt's came about because we realised that a lot of people on the left, uh, particularly cis men, don't seem to have a kind of emotional outlet where they can ask questions about their personal lives unless it's like I don't know unless they happen to have like good female friends or like close friends who they can have that conversation with and a lot of people there's like been a trend of like turning towards the like right as a way for men to find answers to their emotional problems and we find that very concerning and figures like Jordan Peterson are obviously leading this um, trend and so we wanted to reverse that trend by creating the same kind of service where people can ask questions that they might not be able to ask their friends and comrades um, and also provide a space for those who might be middling or leaning towards the alt-right to realise that that's not the only avenue you can go down to have help in your love life and emotional life and intimacy life. Yeah, because this is sort of conversations that me and Rowan have all the time anyways, like just about random themes or with our friends. Uh, also, this is Rowan, I'm Marianne by the way, there you go. Um, and uh, so it began as like pub drinks, talk sort of thing, but we decided that uh, being fascinating to try and do it, the setup really cost fuck all. And so uh, this is episode seven, I think. Also, we want to lay down a bit of some ground rules in terms of the event today, because it's live and uh, it's a bit of a different setup for us than it usually is. Usually we record this just in the intimacy of just the two of us as such. So I think three things, number one, there is a bar at the end of the room. So we sell, we're selling tiskis for two pounds and Negronis for three pounds fifty. Please buy them so I don't have to carry them back in my rucksack. Yes. Number two, uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, content warnings. There will be discussions about uh, sex and potentially sex, uh, sexual violence, but we will also be giving like um, trigger warnings before those particular questions as well. So if you want to leave the room for those particular ones, that's absolutely fine. But we can't always like predict where the conversation is going to go. So just yeah, yeah, those themes may or may not come up and we're going to try and keep a lid on it. But it's yeah. yeah. And number three, I think uh, this is not necessarily an interactive event. Uh, we have a responsibility towards the people that have asked us questions anonymously that I think we have about eight questions, something like that. We don't know if we'll cover all of them today. Um, but basically we're going to be engaging with the camera and we're going to be engaging with those people that have asked us questions. So you kind of don't exist necessarily because we don't want to like break, like kind of please the audience and or, you know, kind of change the dynamic that me and Rowan have. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe you're a bit like, so why are we here? But like you, you kind of get to see how we do this. Yeah. And you're allowed to like, you know, laugh yeah. or like give us a round of applause if we say something wonderful. <laughs> but yeah. But generally, it's yeah, we're, it's basically it's our subjective opinion. This is what the project is kind of based on. We very much are aware of our own limitations in terms of the sort of opinions we can give. We don't claim to be experts no. on anything apart from our own experience and the conversations we've had with friends and comrades. Yeah, agony ons. It's a very sort of quite loose term, I think, in, in its history and all of that stuff. And there's just basically a lack of it in the anarcho scene, and yeah. it's all very sad. So, yeah. Hopefully this will be fun. And yeah, feel free to go to the toilet. There is one on the ground floor. Yeah. Feel free to go to the bar whenever you feel we'll like We'll probably it. do an intermission when I need the toilet. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be at least one break. Um, but yeah, uh, do your thing. And hopefully we'll entertain you. And we'll be, uh, you know, we'll, 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 there will be fidelity to our audience. So, you know. <laughs> Right, so we'll begin with question number one. We're going to be doing them, most of them in order, but one of them... Well, we're starting with this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the way the format goes is we read the questions and then we discuss them. It's really simple. Okay. And so these are all anonymously submitted on Curious yes. Cat. We don't know who sent them. And, and we never discuss them beforehand. That's true. This is the first time I'm going to hear Mariam's hot take. Likewise. Okay. <laughs> okay. Didn't see your live show the other night. So apologize if it was covered then, but I noticed in some of your answers, you kind of lean a lot on non-verbal cues slash signals, just being able to tell if someone is into you and so on. I think one area that could use a bit more explore, exploring is how cognitive biases play into this, both positive, people seeing and hearing what they want to see and hear, and negative, no way could they possibly be into me, they're so out of my league, etc. Or indeed, both of those things going to some extent at the same time. Like, 
how can we be certain that we're not reading someone's I think this person is interesting and I'd like to be friends with them or indeed they're I have no interest in you whatsoever but I'm very polite and or scared of rejecting you openly signals as something more than they are without just openly coming out and saying hello I want to bang you is this feeling mutual <laughs> somewhat relatedly tips on shy for shy dating would be welcome so this is this was I think a very interesting for us a question for us to, to receive because we have been a bit maybe guilty in our previous episodes kind of talking uh, telling people that there is this sort of like fairly clean way to find out whether someone in, is into you if you like empathetically and politely ask them and yet I think both of us have now recently had experiences where people have kind of done that without us giving like a like without yeah. like without us giving like zero signal taking kind interaction as well this is a yeah clearly a yeah so you want to bang yeah yeah like, and it's just that was that's been that's been quite odd so we're like did we create a monster here you know um so yeah, this is tough right because yeah in the past we've definitely sort of been given uh advice as to like you know you kind of hopefully know that someone's like flirting with you and you know obviously rejection is a terrible thing but as long as you go like you know hey i guess i'm kind of into you if you are as well then like then perhaps, if, yeah, is there something to do here? But there are limitations to that. Oh, and we have also, though, said that, like, you need to read someone's body language and be able to, like, like, we've talked a lot about how to hit on someone without being a creep is, like, a big topic we've covered. And we do say, like, it's not only coming out and saying in the middle of nowhere, I think your heart should be bang, but also, you know, like, trying to, like, engage and see what the, you know, the flirting cues are like. So, yeah, but, but yeah, we have maybe created a monster. Yeah, but... um. I, so I'll give a bit of a personal story here that begin with the, a hard story. <laughs> no, but basically just kind of like, don't you think that uh, even if you get visual cues, that you're actually Physical in the game? Cues. Yeah, quite. So, um, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Fuck it. So a couple of years back, a good couple of years back now, um, well, I was squatting, everyone knows that. Uh, I was squatting for a good eight years or so. And there was this one night and we opened uh, a squat. And um, and we were there, you know, you had to sleep like on the on the, on the the ground for the first couple of nights. And maybe if you're lucky, you have a mattress, that sort of thing, you know. And there was me and someone else, someone I fancied so much. Um, fucking hell, they're very lucky that I fancied them, actually. <laughs> Anyways, and so we kind of like, we... No, no, I'll tell you why. I'll okay. tell you why. Yeah, yeah, no, like... Um, and so we were like sleeping next to each other in like sleeping bags, you know, like and that. But like, I mean, I think there were like a couple of people in the room and that sort of stuff. But like, anyways, and I like, I, I fancy that person. So I'm like, you know, kind of all like, I don't know. But anyways, so but I obviously I, they didn't know or anything. Like I was just kind of like, I knew that. Uh, and then kind of in the middle of the night, I wake up to like them kind of grinding on to me sort of thing. Like, and with like a... That's a cue. Uh, hard on and everything yeah yeah it's like it was really full on and I'm like oh my days fuck they fancy me too this is great like <laughs> anyway so but and they, it felt very like alive like they were like hugging me and da -da -da. like it was like a kind of like a couple of minutes sort of thing and then we fell back asleep and it was fine not to and say that you should necessarily just go straight to grinding someone that you fancy no but no but no but no but the story gets worse <laughs> so we wake up in the morning and you know we were sort of chatting and everything and you know I don't know I'm all like Fuck, after months, you know, I kind of, I guess, I think you've asked me to go on a kiss. And they like, go, what? No. You asked them? Yeah, yeah. And they go like, no. What, what do you mean? And I'm like, but I thought, wait, what? And they're like, oh, no, I, I, was, I, was, I, I was dreaming. <laughs> so like... They were sleep fucking someone else. <laughs> and thank, well, that's what I'm saying. Thank fuck that I fancied them, right? Because if I wouldn't well, have... Exactly. That would be assault. That would like, be assault. Yeah. 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 Loud and Are clear. they aware that they sleep assault people? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, well, I mean, or was it a one-off? Down the line, down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was hopefully a one-off. Yeah, I don't know. So that was like a rejection twice. <laughs> so you cannot always terrible. take even so the most. So what we're saying <laughs> is that sometimes even the most physical cues are actually not a sign that anyone fancies you. <laughs> so and I learned it the hard way. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, we're using this anecdote, like anecdote as such, but really just to sort of illustrate that, like, it is really tough out there, and like, it's very, very difficult to tell when someone fancies you. Like, uh, to me, that 
seem like as clear as it can be, right? And absolutely not. And um, so, yeah, so sometimes, it, yeah. And then there have been also things that, I don't know, times when people have told me that they fancy me, I'm like, I have not given any juice to you. Why do you yeah. have it in your hand? Being like, friendly does not mean someone wants to bang you. Right, and then, and then but they were like, but you said that, or you looked that way. And I was just like, I guess I did, but I didn't have, like, there was nothing to it as such. Like, when I flirt, I flirt. Like, someone can tell, like, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. That's like, the problem, right? If someone doesn't know well, you and know yeah, the difference right? between you laughing because they made a joke and laughing because you want to fuck them, like... So, yeah, so it's basically a very subjective thing. Sadly, like, as much as we want to, there's not, like, a clear answer that we can give. Some people, f you know, f and I think there will be another question with people that, like, don't necessarily understand social yeah. cues, right? Like, and, 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 um... Yeah, that there, there are some people that flirt with being, you know, very, very, for instance, passionate about your hobbies or something like that. And then there are others that like can be extremely flirtatious and touch you all the time and be like, yeah, no, mate, like I'm not into you at all. Like, as in, you know, you know, there are those like touchy feely people no, that know, just like, do sad. it all the time. It's really annoying, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially when you do fancy them. Yeah. Um, well, both in different ways. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, it's kind of really annoying. We can't necessarily like give a very, very clear answer here. And in terms of shy and shy, I mean like. So it's kind of a bit harder for me, I think, because when I when I am into someone, I think I'm quite open about yeah, it. Yeah, so I really not, respect I'm not that. Quite shy about it. Like yeah. my advice would be like stand in the corner, don't make eye contact, and never speak to them again. But um, <laughs> that doesn't actually work. So yeah. like, I mean, obviously it's also like the difference between in person shy on shy, but also through like texting and stuff. And I think you can work your way up to a slightly banter through like sending memes and things like that if you're not good at the actual like interpersonal. Thing. But I think I so appreciate them using the word cognitive bias as well because like um, mm -hmm. that's such a thing. The amount of times like, yeah, I mean quite recently let's say as well like there was someone yeah I like I fancied so much and I thought that you know oh fuck they messaged me to ask me how I am surely they fancy me yeah. or something is just no wait man I'm just polite you know so yeah and I wish I would have known that term at the time as well. Oh, or someone it, would have like yanked me out of this being like, no, it's just someone like kind of, and thank fuck, like I didn't necessarily open up myself to end that. Well, that's so interesting because I'm so guilty of the opposite cognitive bias of like not ever realizing anyone fancies me ever. Lucky and so, like, <laughs> No, it's not lucky me because there's so many possible potential things I could have gone for and I just blew it, like, or didn't blow it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's that stage of the night. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we're kind of fucked, but basically, <laughs> yeah. We're kind of fucked either well, way. Or the lack of. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so I think, um, first of all, yeah, what we said in terms of like, don't go there if there is not, not like a, you still have to invest in being charming, basically what we're saying. Is that for instance, those couple of times I think that we got approached with like no, no idea that we gave any signal is also because they weren't necessarily trying to like get us Well, or the anything. person they I'm thinking like of charging. was charming. charming. Like they were charming. They were just... I just thought they were but nice, and I was nice. We were having this like nice conversation. Yeah, but did they invest? Did they do the courting, basically? You know, the sort of like courting. They kind of courted. It's just that they kind of courted me and my boyfriend at the same time. Didn't realize he was my boyfriend. Oh bless. <laughs> no, but I guess that's also that's for one like that one night only. Sure. You know? Well, I guess maybe that's. that's yeah, the question, yeah, but it's the assumption. It's just really tricky because on the one hand, we like to tell people. Look, yeah, just ask, like, the, the best thing, the most consensual thing you can do is ask, That's true. right? But on the other hand, if you get a question in the middle of nowhere from someone you've just been hanging out with and they say, hey, I think you're really hot, can we make out? That can also actually make you feel not that good. Yeah, and so I, it's think, like, I think the reason why I'm a, bit, I'm a bit upset about what happened to me recently is because it was also in a professional environment, right? And yes. so I thought that they took me as, like, a colleague, mm. but turns out that, no, actually the whole time I was just an object, right? Because right? there's a fighting line of like women constantly being like assumed that they will want to have sex and being yeah. asked to have sex. But on the other hand, actually, I'd rather someone ask me to have sex than just try to have sex with me. So it's yeah. like... And it kind of basically what happened was, yeah, like, I mean, I don't know, it was a bit like... It just came so out of nowhere. I felt a bit violated and also like they yeah. were a bit like, but you kind of told people to be open about th things. And yeah. like, sure and I guess you were kind of nice about it and yes maybe because it was a professional environment I took it like quite badly I was like I have not given you any like clue that that was okay but, that, but that's the thing like cues are cues and it's really hard because also like people with different like you know ability well, you to read social shy, cues maybe it and is stuff good, like to just 
ask. Sure, as long as you're also prepared to be rejected. Yeah, because women are so subjected to like being hit on all the time as is. And, and, and it's just like, what are we doing? And now we're going to do it in like a really cutesy sort of feminist way, but we're still going to continue doing it. But that I still, I guess, rather someone say like, hey, I really like you, can we make out? Then send me a dick pic, right? Depends on the dick, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but like, no, you worries. know what I mean? Like there are, even if it both feel like it's somewhat uh, Absolutely. invasive. Absolutely. There's a better way of invading. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think I think core thing is really important, basically, and like making making that f person feel special. Again, also like if you are shy, like there is such thing as uh, if there's two of you sort of in a party, there's that whole thing that we also mentioned before. That's just like it's you two against the world sort of thing. Like yeah. create that sort of environment, and you do. You We're do both feel standing like in the kitchen feeling awkward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it is kind of like when we think about the experience that we have maybe is just also it's a bit like yeah you create that environment where it's just like yeah we two both of us are shy in between all these extroverts you know and then there's a bit of a connection there straight away. also like a really good random tip that i have done at parties where i feel uncomfortable and i see it as another person also standing and feeling uncomfortable is instead of doing like hey how are you and trying to small talk like do a game or something be like you're good you know, at like it. you're good open at that. with like a shag marry avoid or something like that something that isn't about them having to talk about themselves but like is yeah i don't know or are like 20 questions or are like guess what's or something and yeah. like it's quite a good way of engaging for with a million someone. dollars would you do this yeah a good way of engaging with someone without them having to like so what do you do uh, 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 yeah that's true there's so many little like cute random questions you can just ask someone yeah. that would like are instant icebreakers you know like my favorite in terms of texting is on a scale of one to ten how's your day going because then they say what it is on the scale, which is a different thing to being like, how was your day? Yeah. And it's like opens up a debate. So there are like, yeah, which come across less because I often really panic when someone I don't know at a party starts talking to me. And I'm like, what if we have nothing to say? What if you have nothing to talk about? What if I'm leading you on? I need to go to the toilet. And I just instantly leave because leaving is much less bad than having awkward silences in a supposed to be conversation. Yeah. Also self-deprecation is fine. I mean, I mean, this is kind of sounds super subjective as well. Maybe that's like, my trick if it even is a trick but it's just like you know yeah you kind of are open that you have your limitations and and that you're kind of a waste man around a lot of cool people sort of thing well, i mean you know? for example the first time i bonded with someone i'm very good friends with now who is very close to you was because we were both standing outside a party and i was like i feel fucking awkward and i don't want to talk to anyone here and he was like yeah me too but you should it's kind of a sad reality <laughs> that we have to bring ourselves down like that but if it is shy on shine yeah, probably exactly and it, and it way. created this Solidarity, yeah, yeah, which has lasted, so. Right, okay, hopefully we touched that, but it's just because of what we kind of, that, like, kind yeah, of talked about Yeah, watch our other the... videos on similar topics. Um, yeah. Maybe we should post the links to them under this video. Gladly so. you so. can see a kind of, because we have talked to this about this in previous episodes. Yeah. yeah. Makeup, hair. Both there. No, you can never be too sure. No. Perfect. Okay, so now we're still going to start with the other one. Right, do you want to read? Yeah, we are, okay, we're doing right. the, Oh, it's the one at the bottom, so you can turn the phone yeah. sideways if you can't see. Thank you. Oh, this one's fascinating. It's a bit more theoretical, this one, but like, fuck it, I'm interested. I don't know if we're going to have a... Not that we always have a good answer, but this one's a bit more... I prepared a deliberately bad answer. <laughs> so, why do you think so many people on the left use the term emotional labor incorrectly to describe them processing their feelings in relationships? When it was firstly initiated, uh, when it was first initially coined to talk about the way people are expected to maintain or suppress emotions while working. Do you want to stop? I can do, I can do. Just you have some notes. Mariam always brings notes. I never bring notes. I feel like the bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you, you come up with things on a fly. That's really impressive. So I guess I will read this out a little bit just because it's, it's kind of fascinating. I actually didn't know that time emotional labor was coined in like 1983. That's like a long time ago. So emotional labor, um, uh, so basically there is there, there is an um, author called, I want to say H, oh sorry, A. Anton, perhaps, Rock's child, argues in 1983 that within this commodification process, service workers are estranged from their own feelings in the workplace. Uh, but in a recent interview, Rockschild, oh, actually, it, it's, I think it's a she actually, said she was horrified by some people's house, by some people's opinion that housework, uh, that basically uh, housework or women's issues are centered around this interpretation of work. So basically, she wrote this whole um, incredible, well, I guess, incredible at the time, uh, te text about how 
emotional labor is a process that workers find themselves in, or it's an action set of actions that workers find themselves in whenever they're having to use yeah I guess um, rather than like physical labor well, yeah, I guess literally emotional labor whether that's in service industries and or care work uh, similar industries like that or um, sometimes yeah I guess front of house um, industries as well um, to 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 remain at the job, to be better at the job, they have to create this other persona that is that is that is not yes. real as such. And yet, I suppose in history now, well, in the last thirty-six years, we have um, this word has definitely found a new meaning. For but that's very for recent. That's like in the last, like I would say, four or five years, we've started a, using it like yes. explicitly to talk about interpersonal dynamics. Yes, precisely. Yeah, and or um, yeah, or really, really uh, 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 assigning it to to mostly care issues and and whether that's at home or definitely in relationships and stuff like that. And so I guess the person here is asking whether that's good politics. What does this mean? Um, and yeah, it's fascinating. I actually didn't know that this also mm. that this term had such a long history. But what it means is that and we're like kind of clued in people in the left. The fact that even we didn't necessarily know about this. That means like the term is has now got a new meaning like that. I mean, that. I first came across its original purpose in relation to lush workers and how lush yeah. workers are expected to not only sell lush products, but be like, oh, my God, hey, how was your day? Let me massage your hands the second you go into the shop. And how for both customer and worker alike, that's just incredibly awkward and like, yeah, not, yeah. not a good thing. They have thing. quotas in that. Yeah, they have quotas and they are expected to not only be doing their job, but be doing their job with enthusiasm and a smile on their face. And like, yeah, like also waitresses and such. But like, I hate going to Lushes because I'm like, I'm, someone is oh, going to yeah. be touching my hands in five seconds. It's terrible for yeah, both yeah, of us. Yeah. Like, so but like, I'm kind of torn on this because on the one hand, I think it's really important that there is a term for that in the work related context, right? And in the like capitalist context of not only selling your time and selling your physical labor, but also selling your emotions, that's something needs to be taken seriously. And yet, I feel like the fact that it has been appropriated by like feminist struggles, by like dialogues around uh, like intimate like partner relations and putting the labor into both relations with, with a partner, but also with friendships and stuff like that, shows that there wasn't a term to pop properly encapsulate that and that maybe then need that that was a nearly, clearly a discussion that needed like pinpointing yes and i think that's only a good thing basically i think i think it would be useful to make a distinction between labor related emotional labor and that's interpersonal it, emotional right? labor but i think both are equally important like i use the term emotional labor to talk about friendships i do think sorry i'm just doing a bit of a rant now no, i have so many no, feelings please, about this emotional is, this labor is, this is how it should be i do think it's often misappropriated because at the end of the day if you're in a friendship that you don't want to be putting emotional energy into you maybe shouldn't be in that friendship and i do think there is an issue with people saying this friend is taking my emotional labor right now but that in a way makes you a fair weather friend like to be a true friend to someone you kind of need to be there in the thick and the thin unless you're just like a mate Okay. Well, I also in relationships as well. Like, I mm. mean, basically, I guess the the any person would be like, "This is not really. It's not that someone else is taking a lot of your emotional labor. It's just that you're in a shitty relationship." Mm. <laughs> Which kind of sounds harsh, but I mean, basically, I, I kind of I worry that the critique and that this person also has a little bit is is. Uh, you know how sometimes we there is a specific reason why we have anti-fascist flag here, right? Because we want to tie in anti-fascism with feminist issues, right? Because we think that those two are very much uh, historically intertwined. Same way with labor issues, though, as well. Like the amount of erasure of women's struggle in the workplace, as well as very women specific uh, issues that we're having to deal with. Um, you know, the fact that there are now conversations around that. Of, yes, of course, fine. It's fine. It's now like kind of has become a feminist issue like I think that's something to celebrate so I worry yeah. that basically the way that we're framing this a little well the way that the question was framed a little bit it's just like hey mate like just kind of separate your like feminist emotional labor with like our Marxist politics a little bit like because it's just see I didn't the, read it like that I read it more that they don't like that it's been applied to this but not necessarily that they think that this is not an issue I, I I think basically the the what has happened is that we have a such a like poverty of 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 terms, of, yeah, of dictionary, of issue. ways of talking. I also agree that emotional 
and labor and labor also has a very pr that word has a very proud history history that should not be undermined um, and I think shouldn't be conflated by conflated with you know I don't know like my 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 partner didn't like talk to me about their sister coming over hence or like they didn't buy the presents or something hence I'm doing emotional label and then we're talking about like real people are like I don't know in like really you know sometimes messed up industries having to to only perform that labor or they're out on the street if they get go, like get like thrown out of the job you know so basically I think labor has a very very rich history so I don't think I think it shows that we have a poverty of terms that we can't have two separate words or two separate Well, terms. I guess like nowadays there's a lot more talk about like the phrase of like social reproduction to mean the kind of like household labor and such like that, right? Which is a good thing. But I do, but I mean- it's not a term that's caught on in like the liberal no, milieu, right? But I do, I don't know. I, I do think emotional labor is an important term because you end up in certain dynamics with friends or with like relationships where you are taking on a lot of another person's issues and it's somewhat, it's expected that you should take on, say, all of their mental health issues and all oh, of their this and their, this yeah. and this because you're their friend or because you're their partner. And the emotional toll it's taking on you is under recognized because that's just what you do as a good friend or that's what you do as a good girlfriend or whatever. And so I do think there is there should be a space for it to be used in that way. I don't think that everything you do for your partner should be referred to as emotional labor. Yeah. And also, like, I'll come to have, you know, once if you think about it as well, like, I think the worst burden of emotional labor always uh, falls down on women of color because they always have to, like basically, you, I know, you look at Serena Williams or whatnot, this, as, as soon as she like turns off the smile, that's it, you know, she's aggressive and like, I don't know, she's yeah. all of that stuff. So I think it's very much to be recognized that- um, yeah, It's incredibly it's, racialized and gendered. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. But basically that, and again, there is there are huge uh, historical, I guess, um, ties with, you know, uh, the of, of, of conversations surrounding, uh, you know, racial integration as such and uh, labor, labor integration and loans and all of that stuff. So again, like all these conversations about what I'm trying to say is that like, I guess at first I was like, labor has this like Marxian proud history and that is just like white and male or whatnot. And now we're sort of mixing in mm. this like, these different things that's like oh feminism or yeah. like i don't know racist issues and all that stuff but like yeah it's fine the world has moved on we are now talking about these things and perhaps it is okay to to then include you know like labor as a much wider yeah as a much wider yeah. kind of understanding of what that is i think I so too so i think i like fundamentally not disagree with the questioner but i disagree with the angle they're taken towards the question i think we I think. could have a different time just because like as i say i think there is a there is should be a real separation between like the life and death sort of situations that workers are going through yeah. if they get like i don't know kicked yeah. out of house and like a lot of i don't know i see like a lot of like rich celebrities or whatever being like oh hey um i don't know like my rich boyfriend i don't know like it's not give it it's not like washing up the dishes or something like that like and i don't know if we should be using the term for both yeah and that's why like i said like i think like the rise of social reproduction is a theory that people are engaging with to talk about the like care issues and the home and the domestic issues that come alongside any kind of interpersonal thing is really important i i don't know i just feel like emotional labor is such a good term for like i mean you know that like i was in this situation where i was putting a lot of emotional energy into a friend who had a lot of like mental health issues and I had to actually at some point realize that it was taking such a huge toll on me and I hadn't been acknowledging that because I thought I was being a good friend which I was but it then led to me yeah not realizing that it was emotional labor it was like emotionally exhausting me in very a real real sense so I worry about it being like bandied around superfluously by these people but I still don't think that we should not apply it to social dynamics I think we could have new better more creative Terms because I think there is something like feminism, feminist and radical about recognizing the labor that is social and the labor that is like interpersonal and emotional that isn't just to do with the work you do at but a it's job. Just not this, it's just not, it isn't the same, kind of isn't the same. This is the problem, you're a syndicalist. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, not to say that I've also haven't been taxed by all, tax, again, another word, <laughs> another word that we use interchangeably in our like, commodified capitalist existences and you know our commodified social existences yeah yeah so uh conversation to be continued i think if you can think of a better word let us know and we'll publicize it no that's true i mean i, I think it has been co-opted sometimes by people that yes. just like i don't know yeah like 
oh, I don't know, like, I had to actually be there for my friend, emotional labor, yes. damn. Yeah, my friend told me they're upset about something, I'm now exhausted by my emotional labor. Yeah, it's like, like that, then maybe you shouldn't have friends. Yeah, or it happens in relationships as well. Yes. Like, oh shit, like, yeah, I had to be, yeah, I don't know. And like, like at some point you're gonna be that person too, and you're gonna be the one that needs your friends to listen to you exactly. rant about the same person or event or thing a hundred times, and you're gonna, yeah. I mean, I have been the person on both ends of that. That's true. Like, I mean, it's important for us to, to question these terms, but it's yeah. also important for us to have the empathy whenever, you know, we're the ones doing it yeah. up or the other way around. I don't know. It's just like when... Yeah. And it's fine to take a step back when you're emotionally exhausted by a friend. Of course it is. Or a, or a partner or whatever. Like, to be like, I'm actually, like, really just out out of emotional energy right now. Can we, like, redo this later or can we have a but break? is it emotional energy or is it just... I it's think it is. is. I it's think it's the emotional. Maybe it's less the labor word, but it's more like emotional because like you you're actually like helping someone out, right? Yeah. You're not necessarily investing emotions in that. I mean, you s can be. But worrying about someone that you care for is like draining. I find are it draining. Are you worrying though or are you more like coming up with like So what we're doing right now, for instance. Yeah, this is sometimes emotional labor. Emotional labor. <laughs> no, but is it? No, sometimes, sometimes it is. is. Not always. But, but like, it's not the same say, thing. like, for example, you had the same concern day after day after day, and you came to me and, ex and expected and wanted me to be there to talk you through it day after day after day. I think it would be fair to say that that, that, that is friendship, and it's a good friendship. thing, and it's what I want to do. But if I was at some point to say, actually, Mariam, like, right now I just need, like, a me day, like, then uh, that would be also valid. Yes, but I don't know if emotional labor is the word to... Anyways, but yeah. I get it, I get it, I get it. Anyways, but I think it's sort of like, if we had an answer here right now, I think we could like break Twitter and become like yeah. PhDs, you know, and like write this whole thing of why, why this term should be changed or why there yeah. is a, you know... So if you want to come up with a term and give it to us to make us famous, that would be sick. Yeah, okay. Fuck, I do, have we been coming up with like definitive answers this far? It's kind of annoying because usually we're like this and this and this and this. Well, sometimes, I mean, we Well, I use the date, so I'm, I'm like, the I'm well, like 1980, Yeah, but you're here with all the actual information. <laughs> all right. Um, hair. Hair, makeup. still there. So I kind of a bit self-aware because basically what it is is that my hair is like actually too short to like put it up this this high. And so I have it like clipped on. Yeah, but it's and fine. Nobody can see the back of your Do hair. Do I not have like a mullet thing No, you actually on? don't, which okay. is annoying. I always get that when I... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Water? Question three, I think. Yeah. What is your opinion on the trans slash homo fascists that have been popping up recently or any marginalized group supporting fascism or third position ideology? Woo! Thanks for an easy one. <laughs> I had actually not oh, heard about this because I'm not a good interneter. No, no, no. Look, it's it's basically well, it's, it's extremely complicated. And I think I will caveat this to shit that like I am not going to engage pretty much at all in terms of like issues surrounding uh, so, yeah, trans issues and or race issues because literally like not my conversation to be had. However, there is plenty of internalized misogyny as is. So we can totally cover that. So I guess uh, the question is relating to, I don't know, some would say recent phenomena, but I think it's maybe has been made like a bit uh, more popular just by the internet or whatnot. Um, um, that there have been quite a few um, influencer types, I don't know, individuals that are putting themselves out there as such that would stereotypically be seen as coming from somewhat marginalized communities and yet they are flirting with the politics of alt right all the time. So, you know, I mean, I don't even want to do kind of examples, but like... Milo. What? Yeah, fuck it, Milo. Yeah. I mean that that, that 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 is a that is a, a you know a gay dude that is married to a black uh, dude and like still is like fascist to fuck right so and he's not the only one there are plenty um, yeah I just I kind of don't want to necessarily use examples like that because I don't want to necessarily class them as like certain things or like whether they're suffering from the same issues or are there issues I guess that's for us to be discussed as such. So, I don't really know enough about fascists. Well, you should listen to 12 Rules for What? I should listen to 12 <laughs> Rules for What? Actually, so yeah, that's an awesome podcast. I do listen to 12 Rules for What, I might add. Yes. And, do you? Uh, <laughs> I actually wonder, they, I wonder if they would dare to cover this. 
By the way, can I nick a cigarette? Yeah, sorry, of course. Sorry, sorry, thank you. It'd be good if um, they did, actually, because I yes. don't, don't know enough about it. So, okay, so I have been thinking about this a lot, and as I say, I will kind of, like, refer to it more um, from, like, a sort of internalized misogyny sort of perspective. So when we look at uh, some women, for instance, actually, some who was it? I think someone was saying, someone tweeted it out, I don't know how much we agree with it or not, is that, like, TAFs are the sort of modern, well, not modern, I don't know, it's like the the equivalent of the alt-right and the feminist milieu. Well, there's a lot of talk on Twitter and stuff lately about how they're like apparently funded by alt-right groups or something. No. Yeah, I've been hearing this. Yeah. I don't know how I mean, it's true of like all TERFs, but yeah, some yeah. like roots have definitely got strong links with the alt-right movement, particularly in the US. Again, all, let us know if it's like fake news or whatnot. We don't want to like mm. spread false propaganda. I got a nod. Them, I got a nod. So I think it's true. <laughs> I got several nods and a thumbs up. Yes. Can I raise a cheer? <laughs> I'm kidding, don't cheers for Terps. No, 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 no. <laughs> what have we done? No, 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 but basically, so I guess, yeah, someone was saying like that is like the, the, the new sort of uh, older and such. Wait, uh, I want to also read out a little thing that um, I wrote down about this. That was really just a bit of... Um, so when we talk about internalized misogyny and someone wrote it really, really well, well um, Misogyny functions as an ideology or belief system that has accompanied patri patriarchal or male-dominated societies for thousands of years and continues to place women in subordinate positions and with limited access to power and decision-making. Aristotle... Uh, con Aristotle? No, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. The original feminist. <laughs> no, no, that's the thing. Aristotle <laughs> condemned that women exist as natural deformities or imperfect males, and since then... This is what we have, right? Mm. This is why we have like that sort of. Um, and as I say, like you, I know you were mentioning more like um, you know internalized homophobia or internalized transphobia, but like I'm just not gonna go there. So I'm talk gonna talk more about like our own perspectives. So I think since then we are still fighting that thing that we're like not good enough. And I personally come from like an Eastern European background where like still to this day I think probably my relatives are a bit sad I wasn't a boy. Like it's it's like a whole thing, but. Um, Basically, and I think the reason why perhaps people do do it like that, and I kind of get it because I'm trying to like sell out and like right now currently myself, I'm poor, I want to like have more money. Um, not sell out, cash in, it's a different thing. But um, I guess, <laughs> Adam said it is, so I'm like... Yeah, yeah you're not throwing it, it out, you're bringing it in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that it basically, it, 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 you are just attempting to be closer to power. And in historically, power has been with like white straight men. But what they don't do, what I find interesting about like, for example, if we're talking about like female fascists, say, is that they don't, they don't try and be more like men. They try to go into a role of womanness that pleases men, right? In order, like... So, but basically, yeah, okay, I, I say basically like a proud girl. I'm so sorry. I'm actually, this is a different drunkness that this keys would be, by the way. It's been fascinating. Okay, anyway, so sorry, this is tangent. It's just what we do. We talk about, it's a living room conversation. You guys shouldn't even be here, but you are, fine. Yeah, if you want a straight answer. Uh, <laughs> straight. <laughs> straight. <laughs> no, 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 my point was that um, a lot of the networks that we're talking about, like where where these sort of, I guess, outliers from the stereotypical mo woke movement are, uh, are funded by big money and have like very much, I don't know, cis white dudes around them that are like massively championing if they have that mm -hmm, token mm -hmm. person around them and they Absolutely. will. Absolutely. And they will like do everything to like, keep them, and 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 so like. I mean, it even helps Tommy Robinson so is like, much. I've got Muslim friends, like. Yeah, yeah, but basically, like, especially in the U.S. and like, I think it's more of a U.S. Uh, mm. phenomenon than it is here. Uh, the amount, like, basically, the amount of money that goes into those networks, um, and, and 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 so, these individuals like receive huge. Uh, payouts basically so i think it's a it is so uh, also material, Where it's are all a material the thing fucking anarcho so benefactors oh man not a thing well because you know we, we we don't reproduce capitalism so it won't be a thing could we just for a bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, um yeah so i think basically there's a lot of power there there's a lot of money that if you are an outlier you found your thing basically yeah imagine you you could be like everyone else but then you found your thing and it's bringing you material supports 
I can kind of see it, especially if you are really from an insecure background. I mean, again, like I bring in the. So you would just say that, time. like, for them being rich and being liked is more important than being female. Oh, in terms of like their things that they're prioritizing, like gender solidarity is lower than like. And we're talking about influencers, as such. Yeah. Not to say that there aren't plenty of people like in real world. I don't know. Like we we meet. I don't know. You meet those women all the time. It's just it's just like no women shouldn't be a president, right? There are plenty of women that think that, or like women shouldn't go into high office, or women shouldn't be CEOs, you know? That happens all the time. Definitely where I come from, like in, back in Eastern Europe, it's just like, yes, yeah, this whole thing, like it's, it's, it's a man's world as it, as it should be. But it's also, I think, to, to bring in this, this quote, you know, that, that I just read out, it's just like, we've been subjected to this for thousands of years. So it's, it, then it only recently, like really within our lifetime, have been trying, we've been trying to like challenge this. But um, you get it in well, gross ways, right? Issues. You get it through like lean in feminism as well, where it's like, be the chairwoman instead of the chairman. And like, you know, which I wouldn't call like fascist, but like the like pro-capitalist versions of feminism and other things and like LGBTQ and particularly gay men. There's a lot of like visibility through corporate means that is championed, which is critiquable by us, I think. But also like, I was just actually just on my way here, was listening to a podcast. Um, I want us. Oh man, I feel really bad. That I forgot their name to actually plug them. But they, not Labour Day. No way. Not maybe working class history. Maybe not. But um, they were doing an LGBTQ special for the last few days. So, it might have been them. so basically, it was about the miners' strike and um, and I think it's LGSM, so lesbians and gays for supporting miners, supporting miners, support yeah. the miners, support the miners. Um, and um, so this was an incredible, ma incredible. Uh, I guess marriage in the two movements with the burgeoning marriage of, of the, the burgeoning movement of, 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 of growth of, of LGBTQ uh, rights in the in the 80s as well as the the, the, the huge minor strikes and uh, there was a, an organization that was found uh, around that and um, one of the people was talking about it and he was like look I was a I was a minor kid I, like a, a kid that was going to be a minor. I was a minor. I knew I was gay internally, but I hated everything about that. I internalized so much of my like oh, so much homophobia. I hated myself. I went to GP to cure myself, you know, basically. And then only eventually, he like they found comrades that were empathetic enough, and then they you know they version to be who they are right now, a rad babe and all of that stuff. But like, what if you are not lucky enough to have found yeah. these people? What if you do go through incredible periods of of, of yeah, of trauma and rejection, and honestly, and then you find out these like right wing people that go like, yeah, babes, we're gonna be your like, we're gonna be your family. Yeah, you can be we're on the poster. Give you money. You can be on a poster. Just do what you're doing, but kind of hate the liberals a bit. Yeah. that's really it's attractive. Pretty appealing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question. I need the toilet. Okay. Can fine. we have a break? Mm -hmm. Okay. Five minute break, I'll we need to go to the toilet. Finish. Right, no, so okay, so I hope that answers your question. I know it's a complicated one because it's like, yeah, again, if we could have like, this is a million dollar question, right? Like if we could answer, they're doing this because of this. And if we only had a counter to that, then yeah, world revolution, so easy. No, like it, it, uh, people's traumas, people's material needs, necessities, thousands of years patriarchy, it fucks with us. And I do think as people on the left, we need to like really seriously interrogate the reasons why women, why people of color, why like uh, trans and LGBTQ people join the alt-right and also not, not put it down to one thing or another thing or another thing. Cause there are um, probably a lot of complicated personal reasons to do with, yeah, financial reasons, but also maybe like, ideology and maybe also self-denial self community. community we suck at, at like creating community as the left we're cold we're all of the time emotionally uh, unavailable it's really very very difficult yeah. to, for us to i don't know not difficult but basically we have really fucked it in terms of being inviting a lot of the time yeah because we are elitist a lot of the time so and our like desire to keep every place safe and like not up, upset people rightly leads to a lot of people feeling scared of speaking which is also why we're doing this channel as well yeah. like yeah. so we do on the left need to work out for ourselves why marginalized groups are becoming fascist and what we can do to yeah that's that. a failure as yeah. well i mean i also a bit i work sorry just the last thing and i know you're it's gonna okay I, i'm gonna be fine i have my whole thing so I work in like well I, I I try to cover the gaming industry from like an I don't know a radical Watch left, left feminist person. Oh, thank you. I'll have to go back to it as well. But um, and I call out women all the time, way way more than I call out men mm. a lot of the time because of like 
are the, yeah, the sort of corporate feminism that we create, the lack of uh, attention towards the women in the global south in terms of the creation of our hardware. I do this all the time on Twitter a lot. And I think people kind of see me as like, oh, so you're with the dudes, right? But because you call out women all the time. But my argument is like, no, because we've been oppressed way, way more, we should know better. We should fucking know but better. But I do think it is a problem that we hold women to higher standards uh, than we hold men and marginalized groups in general. We hold to a higher standard of like wokeness than we do like, oh, you know, the cis white straight man, he, he doesn't know any better. It's like, we should stop patronizing them and bring them the fuck up while simultaneously calling out women on their like hypocritical bullshit. I think this is also a me issue. I've actually kind of admitted this a little bit and maybe this is problematic, but fuck it, it is what it is. I respect right wing people truly a bit more than I respect centrists. Like I respect oh, yeah. Tories that are more than I respect Lib Dems and like independent groups. At least they have an opinion. Stuff. Honestly, like so there's something to be said about like yeah, people that are just like, that's it, they're far gone, but like at least there's like an ideology behind that. Rather than like kind of people that are kind of like, yeah, but we're trying to, but we're not really. I they're only keep politics out of it though. Like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. want to get along. Yeah, yeah, or just like, we're already so progressive as is. Mm. So that's why, that's what, that's my thing with women is like, we should know better and we should not stay, stay on fences because historically we have been oppressed. And, and so yeah, it's kind of a bit of a, I think, but I do feel that perhaps that makes it look like, oh yeah, I'm like, produce but I'm not like I will fight right wing until my last breath but it's just but centrist something about like that sort of like I just feel betrayed you know. by women I don't feel betrayed yeah, by like like just white straight dudes I'm like well they're just doing that asshole thing and if a woman does it I'm like oh but but yeah. you could have been with me yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and I think but that, that is that's a, but it is a I do think we need to n not high hold marginalized people to a higher standard I, I, I can only talk about I can only talk about women because that's just yeah. like cis women or whatnot. But like I do and I will because like it's not that fucking hard to like be supportive of like sisters that have like gone through the same shit. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. and are still going through the same shit. And the reason why you have a platform that you do is because people have even fought for you to even have this platform. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And like the people on the right to you are gonna fuck you the first. Well, not in that way. Like the first moment they get. Cool. All right. Break Cheerful now. end of question. Five minutes only this time, okay? Yeah, so five minutes. Okay. Okay, next question. It's your turn to read. No. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to whip out my notebook. Hello, I'm an Aspie. So someone with Asperger's syndrome? Asperger's? Asperger's? I say Burgers, but I'm not sure. I think I'm pretty sure it's Gers. I'm pretty sure it's really? Gers. But like that's burger. burger. Yeah. Burgers with a J. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry, I guess okay. we should, should have known that before. Okay, no, let's start no, again. <laughs> I'm an SP, that makes it easier. <laughs> and it's uh, very difficult for me to initiate and maintain a conversation with any stranger, making it very difficult for me to find love. But I think it's perfectly fine for me once I'm familiar with the person. What tips can you suggest to help me out with the situation? Is there a way to get a girl attracted without doing much of the talking? Smiley face. I mean, I love talking, so like, if someone just asks me questions but if about someone myself. someone just like, doesn't talk, but does. If the they stuff, ask good questions. Oh, no, but stuff. Right? Well, I mean, we should probably Don't have a conversation talk. first. Sorry? We should have a conversation first. I mean, hi, hi, where now? <laughs> we have very different dating lives. <laughs> Can I have yours? <laughs> no, no, I'm actually a very conservative person there. No, but I have also signed up to Tinder recently. Good mm. fun, good fun. But like having oh, good okay. questions, if you don't want to talk a lot, having good, interesting questions is a number one tip from me. Like not just, hey, how are you? What was your day like? But like, which of the last 52 American presidents would you shag, marry, avoid? <laughs> I, like, I like a good shag, marry, avoid theme. I'm sorry, like, it's interesting. You never do that to me. What's going on? Oh my God, I have a really good one. Can you do it now? Kind of, okay, but they're all terrible. That's the whole point. Yeah, okay, shag, marry, avoid, border guard, prison officer, riot cop. Thanks, wow, legend. Shag, marry, avoid. Is it not a shag, kill, marry, kill? Kill, yeah. kill, definitely kill. Sorry. Shag, marry, Are we kill. Are on camera? Could we actually not get uh, done for like threatening office, state officials or something? I mean, we're not monetized as is. We should be monetized to so watch more of our content. But um, yeah, if you watch our content, we could eventually get monetized. So. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, we're on s we're on six hundred hours, and we need to be on four thousand hours. So, a get bit more. get watching, peeps. Yeah. Uh, 
Right, so, sh sorry, that, 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 again. You can all do it. Shag, marry, avoid, prison officer, riot cop, border guard. In your guard. head though, in your head though, because really this is for, we, this is the sort of thing we would be doing if it was just the two of us, but now I'll answer. Okay, shag, marry, avoid, B border, kill. kill. Uh, border guard, riot cop, prison officer. Uh, border guard, policeman. Riot cop specifically though. Riot cop and? Prison officer. officer. I would marry the riot uh, guard because they have quite a higher wage, probably. Like they're higher up in terms of the police. <laughs> Capitalist. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I mean, you've got to get something out of the relationship. <laughs> so that that's just that. See, I thought I would shag them because they're going to be super high on drugs and be really pumped and into it. No, that's the prison officer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, fuck the prison officer and then kill the border guard. Yeah. I mean. Fine. I think I'd shag the I feel like I also, cop. with that, that's just, to me, it seems like the border guard is also like the closest actually life in that situation. So, well, well yeah. in prison guards. On mass, though. On well, mass. it depends, okay, it depends on what the prison is as well. Like, we're talking very much like Britain centric here. Yeah, I'm talking Britain centric, but like, prison officers also like commit very specific assaults themselves yes, that the others don't. Like, do, all right? But border guards just... don't like. Well, what's your answer? Shag a riot cop. They're huge bears these days, which is kind yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kill a prison officer, marry a border guard? They would take you places? They would take you places? <laughs> I can like check in all of my like knives for free. I don't know. What's the perk here? What's the perk? I don't have to take my laptop out of my bag and like ruin my beautiful packing. Right. Fair play. <laughs> but basically, they're all terrible and they should all uh, die. <laughs> See, neither of us had the sentence, so we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to the question. To the question. So sorry. So to be fair, I guess I had the um, I had the privilege of two people close to me uh, to have like given me some answers because again, it's a sort of like question where like you don't necessarily um, don't feel qualified to answer it. And again, thank you so much, guys. Again, isn't it fascinating? What what a poverty and lack of a program like this there is that we're getting questions that we always go like caveat we're not we're not like like we're not uh we're not shouldn't be the ones answering this but the way that i see an equity algorithms also like in the future in five years time it's 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 an umbrella organization yeah, with lots of different specific with lots of different specific people like answering their own shit but and supporting like, each other we are able to answer in as much as if i were to be hit on by someone with Asperger's, how would I want that to go? So we can yeah. be like the girl in the situation, right? Yeah. I'm also now going to be doing just teeny tiny of pleasing of the audience. We'll do but it. Just really, really just to exp well, please please them. But like to explain. Pleasure them. <laughs> uh, to explain basically why, because um, a little bit of the criticism that we do receive is just like, we are just two white cis girls that are answering these questions. We're very much aware of that. And be people are going like, why don't you get like a guest, you know? like you know a trans person or like a person of color you know like to to give their perspective on these sort of questions and like you see how it sounds it sounds tokenistic as fuck yeah like so we don't like, want to do we that. don't want to get like the token poc to yeah, say how like, like people of color feel like yeah because it's subjective as fuck and we very much acknowledge i think our own um limitations yeah. in this conversation and i think another thing is like it's really important for us to like keep the dynamic that we have which is kind of like banter and a bit silly and the kind of living yeah. room situation this which like if we get like a, someone like really legit and for real someone actually to be with us yeah then that would just be like we'd have to i don't know then it would put us in terms more of a, like an expert situation which mm. is just something we're not and like we make jokes we fuck up we talk about our own sex lives this is not to say we wouldn't have guests in the future but they wouldn't be a guest because they're trans or because they're poc or because they're a prison officer this would be yeah. they'd be a guest because well, that we wouldn't have that. they have something unique to contribute yeah. because of them yeah not their like yeah so fund us and maybe we'll get, get yes okay now for real to get back to the question so yeah as i said i had like the privilege i had a couple of my friends to like answer the question okay. oh, shall no. we sorry this just kind this of gonna be terrible the, the person on the video Oh, it's a whole variety of sounds. Oh, okay. Okay. Go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do they say? Yeah, so I guess I just have a couple of bullet points and I'll try to get through them as such. And I think out of those, you'll have plenty to like kind of confirm or deny on all of the stuff, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, first, 
uh, reaction and I obviously sent this well obviously we received those uh, anonymously and I've sent it to a couple of my friends being like hey we have no idea who it is so so really it was just like really just trying to we did that the same one thing with the sex worker question right yes. like we tried to get whenever we're not specifically uh, relating to the subject we try to get opinions yeah. from those engaged because we don't want to like speak over anyone sometimes sometimes we haven't done that for its own specific reasons but anyways um, so one of their reactions was, first of all, mate, like to just be like, hey, I'm going to meet someone at the party and we'll be happily ever after. That's some movie bullshit that never happens. Yes. And they like put it very, very specifically that. And I think that was a really, really useful contribution that like, even if you are, because I guess our like stereotypical sort of, sorry, like um, world of how we interact, like very much sort of supports the idea that it is like that. And I think people- Not um, in our world. Not in our world, but yeah. So but basically, they were like, first of all, get rid of that idea. This in is our bullshit. world, no one has a happy ever after. Yeah, and uh, what they said is just that uh, they have found it uh, easier to either use internet because there are no stupid social cues, and whether someone is interested or not, you can just literally ask that, or you can like leave the conversation whenever you want to. And actually, th from what I know from them, they have been like quite successful in finding long-term relationships via that. Can I engage with these point by point? Absolutely. Because on that point, I find that really interesting because one of the critiques of internet dating is that it's really hard to read tone, right? And someone who has Asperger's finds it in social situations hard to read tone anyway. So like without that added level of being able to tell from someone's like emoji or specific like use of a full stop instead of exclamation mark what their tone is, like I'm, I'm just really interested by the yeah. fact that that's actually a helpful avenue, not a much harder avenue because of those cues those non-verbal, those written cues. Yeah, I think they also have really, which I found really, really interesting, that they're kind of like, hey, we don't need to kind of like live in the shadows. You can totally be like, hey, I didn't necessarily get that. Does that mean this or does that mean that? That's so true. And I'd much right? rather that. Yeah, yeah, that is actually really true. And you can totally do that. So maybe that's a really good point, actually. If you don't know what someone means, ask. Yeah. 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 And to be fair, we should be doing that more of that anyway. In every everywhere. conversation. Literally. <laughs> but that's the thing, actually, in the really, oh, I don't know how to say this. This is going to sound a bit like, the word is not, this, the word I'm going to sound is way more, oh, the, the word I'm going to use is way more, um, I think, has more baggage than actually the word I mean in my head, but it's maybe my English or whatever. But it's a certain, maybe what the thing will come out from this answer is like certain fetishization or whatnot. But like what I'm saying here is that like, we have made up so many weird social cues that are not real that are just like this like sort of peacock like the paradise bird sort of dance like kind of courting that we do as as people that like are trying to play games mm -hmm. and something that fuck we games in our first episode yeah we said like fuck, fuck games. games and i still fucking stand by that and yeah this whole like you know, oh, are they into me? Are they not? Like, oh my God, they're not telling me. Like, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm 20, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah. Like, you either are or you're not. If like, you're going to ghost me, then we're over. This is not a, like, yeah. hard to get situation. And I think that's such a, that's Fuck a bit of a leftist, get. that's a bit of a leftist perspective because, and now I know that I've been from a Tinder man, like, it's ripe of that bullshit. Yeah. Like, my God, everyone's like, you know, way too cool for school yeah. to, to have any sort of, if you don't text me, anyone. I'm gonna assume you don't like me and get over you stat. Yeah. Like, I'm not like gonna that. be like, ooh, maybe I should try this. No. So it's a bit of a like, basically we have really fucked our own situation by like creating these, yeah, these, these weird rules, yeah. rules that are also very much put on us by, I think by societal pressure and pop culture as well. Well, women shouldn't be direct, right? Like men should do the chasing, you should play play it cool be like oh i can't meet this week i'll meet next week yeah Fuck it, I can leave them on red if you i know, like you i'll meet you now yeah like, leave them on red like no, all of that like leave them on red. bullshit that's that we mean it's just yeah. mean it's just meanness and but that's the real anti social anti-social anti interaction disguised as some kind of dating dance and to be honest fuck that shit if you're gonna not respond to my text you don't deserve my response like you say this and i say this and we know it's true but we are like a we are like a slit of a tiny minority out there. The real world outside of our yeah, milieu yeah, yeah. is fucking crazy, man. And I've kind of dipped in on in and out of it. Like I, I'm fully we in went, right now. Remember, yeah. remember we went clubbing a little bit. Like mm. and we kind of noticed how it is out there in the real world. We did a um, IRL investigation into the dating habits of 
people in London and it was it was regularly sad. we do this. We're basically me and Ro what we do, like we dress up like real world like real people would. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> boobs up, short, short, short skirts. Yeah. And we go like Dalston, Old Street, just to see how it is. Because we, you know, we take our job really seriously. Yeah. We're not going any on. So we go out and we see what's up, you know. And we, uh, we spend way too much money on cocktails, money that we don't have. But, you know, it's We have it's a coffee crazy. link attached to all of our videos yeah, if you want PayPal, to fund this. Just go, like, it's literally just Agonions. like buy us a tisky. Literally, I think, we'll, okay, we have now made about 30 pounds out of this project. Uh, as in like 18 pounds it was on the last show we got sent a bit more money okay so that's good but i mean yeah no we still share please but basically yeah so, so out there it's terrible so so we massively massively appreciate that the, the 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 whole play with social cues and bullshit is so so fucking real like it's just yeah i have yeah. no time someone like the whole like being mean to keep them keen if you're mean i don't want to talk to you you're mean if you're mean fuck you yeah don't be mean to someone you fancy. Like, don't be mean in full stop, but particularly to someone you want to like have the sex with. Yeah. Like, okay, so I'm like only that? like an a line and okay. A half sorry, yeah, next one, okay. next one. So another thing. So internet first, and From then the, the other one was like uh, hobbies and movements. So like, uh, so basically, if you're you know, because uh, if you're really interested in I don't know, World War Two planes or or crafting or or particular law you know or maybe you're like really obsessed with this particular uh, social movement basically what what i obsessed is the wrong word to be fair yeah having but a passion my understanding here is that as again like uh, a, a certain a certain expression sometimes of someone who has asperger's asperger's syndrome is like a, a real real uh, generosity of time towards something and like real passion to it as such yep. and so like yeah engage with that all that and yet and yet straight away they said well like yeah but don't do it just so like go get laid like because that's fucking weird and like don't do that but also like i'm so i'm part of this uh facebook relationships groups called um that relationship sounds exhausting and it's very interesting because people post about their relationships and get advice it's like kind of what we do but as a facebook group but not as Way good as what we do so <laughs> it's like normie but Someone was talking today about how their boyfriend who has Asperger's uh, like info dumps on them. And so like he's got these like very niche specific interests, like something to do with coding. And he will just like he feels like physically like un like unable to rest until he gets that information out. And he like info dumps on her all of his information about coding. And all the advice was kind of similarly to what you're saying was like instead of info dumping on her, like join a Facebook group. About that. Like there are Facebook groups for every niche interest now. Like it, and that's a really good way of like one meeting people, but also getting your like hobby out of your system, so you don't overwhelm a partner. Because yeah, like that is a um, and like a lot of people in the comments were like, I I have um, Asperger's or autism, and I do this, I do this too, and I've got mechanisms with my partner, or like yeah, I like do it in a blog, or I do it in a Facebook group, or this or this. So it was, it was a really interesting like in relation to this question, yeah. like if you have this, these passions and these hobbies, either you find someone who's equally passionate about them, or you find ways of managing discussing that passion with them and with a group of people who have similar interests because yeah. yeah every passion has a yeah. has a fan base but and yet you wouldn't shouldn't just go there just to like get laid or something that's because no. that's that sort of but well. you can not easily... say that as lefties we don't do that all the time <laughs> but i've never done it through facebook specifically yeah. like some people do and like in my kink group is for example it's really frowned upon like i'm part of a kink group called oops up my kink and you're not allowed to go into someone's dms without asking first yeah and but that's like I mean, a really good rule. Maybe this is a bit more like IRL. Yeah. I don't know. But, but, but what I'm saying is that's actually a very good way of doing that. Like th you can meet so many people through online forums. That yeah. Yeah. Right. Then I go, um, yeah. So uh, I think perhaps rather than like trying to flirt straight away, perhaps it would be kind of quite straight up declaring what is interesting about you, you know? So being like, I know maybe it's like the coolest thing you know that it is about yourself. Like start talking about that and that will immediately like get someone yes. attracted a lot of us like I'm, i don't know maybe we're just too shy to do that but like well you never should be because then you just sound like an arrogant fuck but i mean there are ways to to approach that in like a i think in like a way that would be a conversation starter straight away and that's just done and now you're already in flux i mean i use that now like for example like i love I'm saying, not not, actually not us like awkward <laughs> but like i like saying to people who i don't know that i was a famous stand-up comedian in austria because you fucking were, because I you were but also because like to people in london that's like a kind of a weird thing and it's like it's like my like 
you know, my conversation piece, if you like. And so I, I use that when I'm feeling socially awkward and like I don't have anything to say to people. I'm like, so I was a stand-up comedian once. Yeah. And I can either go down the route of talking about a comedy or going down the route of talking about why it was terrible and I had to leave Austria. Yeah. But either way, it's like created <laughs> a... <laughs> Yeah, that happened. Yeah, um, like legit. Happened. Yeah. No, it's because of the comedy, because the comedy, I don't know how to explain this. It's the best. It's basically an alcohol agonions, but it's actually funny because it's real and, and someone else doing it like in a really, really funny way. Like it's superb. You should call, you should check it out. It's called Toronto Alice, Tolerant Alice. And yeah, oh, but it, uh, it went sour and I had to leave the country. But either way, there's like, it's my, it's my go to like, Fun fact about me for a stranger, and yeah. it, it works every time. And so, like, yeah, that's actually really good advice. Another thing is, like, people like being asked questions and listened to. So, you know, again, when we talked about the little games and yeah. a bit previously, but just like there are quirky things that you can just like ask straight away that like are also like beginners of conversations, or not only ask, but also, yeah, just put out there. Yeah. Such, I mean, this kind of requires a bit more of a rehearsal, I suppose. Like, but what's your favorite dinosaur? Oh my god. I'm already into you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite dinosaur, Mariam? I think it's the one with like a really tall neck. Is that br Brachiosaurus? A tiny, tiny head. The, like the Sharian one. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's a Brachiosaurus. We, it's the tallest yeah. one. I'm getting I'm really a nod. Small it's a, and I have big yeah. heads, so it's like the opposite of me. Cute. All right, I like it. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, and then basically they really, really talk about like even if you think someone is into you, verbal like consent is great, and if but if you are worried of misunderstanding, asking again is perfectly cool, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's basically it's absolutely fine. But so maybe just, I yeah? think one of the things we need to discuss with this and also with uh, we've created a monster thing is that there's different ways of asking, yeah. and I think that is actually quite important. Like rather than like I like you, can we fuck? There's like I've really enjoyed this conversation. And you see what, and you see yeah, what they say. Yeah, 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 or yeah. like, hey, oh. like that was super funny. Like you're super funny. Like honestly, well, like uh, the the a, a lot of my notes for that particular question in terms of us creating monster actually came from a WhatsApp conversation. Yeah. And something that you said, which was really really perfect. Like uh, you said, surely the better question to ask would be like, hey, m maybe perhaps we click tonight. Would you think that? And you said that, and that, that was yeah. really, really cool. And that's the sort of thing that perhaps could and be. And the thing, because when we say, like, ask and be direct, we don't mean, I like you, can we bang? We mean, yeah. we and mean, that's like. Yeah, that's what yeah. happened to me. And this <laughs> is the understanding that, like, not just applying to you, but applying to a lot of our questioners, I think, has happened. That, like, yeah, there also, is a I way think of, you're a really nice person, by the way, if you're watching. Yeah, really and do. thank you for bringing this question. Yeah. But, like, yeah. No, the, no, no, the person that actually did that to oh. me. They, oh, I that think person. They might be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Other than that, you're an awesome person. It was like, you know, it was a hit and a miss. It happens. Yeah. But like, yeah, there's a way of being like, yeah, I think we really clicked tonight or like super funny, we should hang out again. And you can get you can get a vibe from those kind of questions without going straight in for the jugular of like, let's funkular, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> legend. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, like, OK, and then the other person that I'm now moving on to them is just like, luckily, they've been happy, like they've been lucky enough to kind of get approached themselves, but they were quite open. Um, about them being available and that's another thing it's just like how do they do that how do you how, yeah. do, you, how do you flag that you're available without being like hi i'm rowan i'm single well i think again there are ways of doing that but i mean i don't know i mean again it's ways of doing that for us that are just like i guess we can find ways to do it as such but i mean i don't know if you honestly like because i really love and know that person they're just like they're frustrated they're like yeah i'm kind of i'm like kind of awesome but I'm single but I shouldn't be because I'm kind of awesome but not in that sort but of way. If someone said that I would kind of respect no, that because I think that all the time about myself. Yeah same. <laughs> I'm like and I'm so kind of, great how do people not appreciate They me? kind of haven't had like a the best time in recently and such but they're such absolute legends and I think that was their way kind of like putting themselves out there hmm. being like kind of gone through something shit. Well again again this could be totally like oh hey like I have this like X thing going on that's totally bullshit so this is all super super or it could be manipulative like you know yeah yeah the way yeah. we compared as well but like there's a certain way and I don't think we're now demonstrating the best ways of doing this uh, but there are ways of perhaps don't be like us um, but how do you say you're single in a non creepy no, no, way? No, you don't say you're single. You're saying that you're available. I think that's a different way of saying it. How do you? I just honestly don't know how I would also, do I've that. Also, I haven't been single flirting. since I'm 19, so. Uh, All right, <laughs> Miss Brag a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. It's polyamory is this whole thing. This one. Not only have I not been single, I've had multiple partners. And that has brought me many 
Anyways. Um, um, and now right. I'm on Tinder. <laughs> I had this conversation, all right? No, I know. It's all legitimate. It's all, it's all, it's all very consensual. I am also, I haven't done... Anyways. I was, I was I'm kidding. Th- I'm so sorry. I, the fact that you have an account there doesn't mean you've actually done anything. I know. Yeah, I have an account. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. yeah. Okay. They were also saying age and practice helps a lot because uh, you learn to camo- mm. camouflage certain things, which is a very beautiful, like it's a fascinating term that they use, camouflage, as in like, oh, so I am like the people around me, right? But so like I'm thing? like the trees. No, it's sadly, it's fucked. Yeah, it's really that's sad. what I feel like. Oh, so I'm also as fucking manipulative and terrible as everyone else. I don't think that's what they meant, but basically this kind of implies But also that they're like hiding their true self. they have that pressure. Yeah. They're hiding their true self to create a persona that is like more socially acceptable. It's quite... I mean, I understand that it's a necessity, unfortunately, but thing. it's sad. Yeah, because like honestly, the mainstream is fucking shit. Yeah. So no one we should be doing that. We all hide well, our true selves I to mean, get laid. Like. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. We all camouflage ourselves to be way more normal than we are. Yeah. Because we're all fucked or lack of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, as you age, everything that feels so crucial at the time because a bit less intense. I don't know if that's helpful as, as such. I know, again, the age of you, the person that's asking the question, person like, you will, f- again, with a lot of mental health, something that I heard or found is just like, we create, and that was a beautiful analogy that someone said, I'm not going to be able to give justice to it. But um, the way that one should be seeing mental health sometimes, perhaps, is like, it's a, it's like a, a slope to ski. And then there are certain, um, I guess paths that have already been made mm. as such and it's very difficult to get out of those and so that's how I see also my mind it's just like it it kind of falls into certain patterns it's a pattern right yeah. and so it's 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 very difficult to get out of that and so my anxiety goes like okay this and that means that and that means that okay I'm in the pits now um, but sometimes if you can like um, yeah just basically I think through hit and miss if you find that you kind of break out of those things and things are a bit less intense because it's just like a lot of the time basically you realize what was like the pits actually is not in, as intense and it's also actually that, not like, the end of the world then like you can actually go the other way or it's actually yeah you know, and also that the potential thing is not also like the highest stakes like if you get or do not get that person or that thing that's also not the end of the world or like, rejection as well yeah exactly rejection is not the end of the world like and that's a really important lesson to learn. I think and that comes with age. Sorry I was going to say, no, I was literally like, about to say that's something I think you've learned better than me and that's why you're better at actually hitting on people who you fancy than me. Being because, rejected. <laughs> because, because you are less scared of rejection than me. Yes, actually. Like, that's true, yeah. Like, I am so terrified of rejection that I will not put myself out there. I just won't. Mm. And I, that, I've always said this to you that something I really, really admire about you is that you do put yourself out there when it, people you it's like. It's just a bit of a, like... You I'm know, it's like I would regret it if I didn't yeah. do the extra mile. And I don't think I've ever done it in the creep away. Tell me if I have. <laughs> I don't think I have. But, like but it was weird. I was just like, I always like send that extra message. Yeah. And I always give you the advice to do that. I'm like, yeah, tell them how you feel. Yeah. What have yeah. you got to lose? But I don't do it myself. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. So. But I never regret that I did it because exactly. I don't think it was in any way. It was, m- it was more like, oh, should we meet again? But that's, thing, yeah, like, I really yeah. respect that. Anyways. Uh, and, and as well, though, to be fair, they also, you know, always say so socializing can be very taxing and a lot of it's bullshit really is. As in like, you, the, the, the framing of your question was very much like, how do I get things in like a social situation? But like, a lot of it will be taxing and like finding ways to get out of that particular situation in like a big room. There are so many, many a- like uh, avenues these days to do that and it's fine. But also, like, it depends on your, like, friendship circles. Like, do you get invited to big parties? Do you just have smaller gatherings? Are the closer circles of friends? Like, how are you meeting people? Like, the rules all annoyingly differ in these different situations, right? And there are plenty of Facebook groups these days is, as well about this. is what I this think, as well. Like, yeah. even about just, like, oh, you know, support for people with Asperger's syndrome. Absolutely. And you can totally, like, thank you so much for posting this to us. But, like, there are also very, like, plenty of, like, more speci- speci- specific groups to uh to address this yeah, but it's cool that you brought advice from people yeah. like who relate i think that's yeah. really well a really yeah, good so framework for the legends. questions yeah absolute yeah thank you to them. to them yeah thank you and i hope i gave that justice because they were like we're gonna fucking watch this <laughs> so thank you i'm sorry for veering off the question a bit more in the beginning of the question yeah 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 we just needed to know whether we'd shag a riot cop or not <laughs> all right 
By the way, there are like smirks in the audience. They're they're not just dead. They do actually <laughs> smile a bit. They're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Is everyone okay? Anyone need a break? We all we all good. Cool. Okay. Ah. Ancom Wobbly, married to the love of my life. So, um, th so oh. say what Ancom Wobbly should I do? I'm not Anarcho gonna. Anarcho communist, yeah. IWW, yeah. so international workers of the world yeah. activist yeah. person. That. Married to the love of my life, together for ten plus years. Our relationship is supportive, passionate, and extremely communicative. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that's not for me. Jealousy speaking through. Um, <laughs> I've become. <laughs> Are you funny? Because I actually thought that they're lying. Ooh, oh, we haven't finished the question yet. I have become much more active in direct, direct action and organizing the past few months, and I can tell inherently it's wearing on my wife. She knows this is important to me and our worldviews align, though she has no desire to participate, which is entirely her right and prerogative. Struggling with the visceral imperative I feel to do my part to fight the good fight, while still maintaining the healthy relationship we have both enjoyed for so long. Please keep doing the show. The work you're doing is critical. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Great question. <laughs> well, great ending. <laughs> I feel like I'll be submitting that in ten I years. So you know, of, I have feelings about this. All right, yeah, you, yeah, yeah okay. hit me with your feelings. So first, 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 first. so um, it's awesome that you say that you have been involved more in the sort of direct organizing in the in the last couple of months, if not a year or so, uh, and like sadly, uh finding it out the hard way I can just tell you that there is a honeymoon period to that it will most definitely probably clash like crash at some point and you kind of want to keep things that are real to you for good um, basically yeah so um, I had maybe what like two or three years honeymoon period where to me like the direct action organizing and like lifestyle anarchism and like squatting and all of the demos and just like cycling on my bike into the sunset after a squat party and like go on a demo to after two hours of sleep and then like keep doing going, an occupation going. like honestly it was all just it just all seemed like a, such a dream and it was all like such a you know i mean it, it was such a revelation to have found this community and yeah, like a couple of downs the line, I had like nervous breakdowns and like absolutely fell out with a lot of people. I fled the country <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> uh, as in, maybe you're a bit older and you know how to like, like, sort of dip yourself in and out, sort of thing. I guess we were quite young. Well, this is, it doesn't sound like but he's it's been. But it's not world a lot. But it doesn't sound like he's been um, an anarcho communist or a wobbly recently. It sounded like those things are lo ongoing and it's just the. Like his politics have always been there, but his... So that allows me to my second point. Ah. Do your politics align? Because this is fascinating to me, as in like, so you have all of these political opinions that you probably like um, really go through in a very, really raw, in a very raw way throughout your day, throughout your organizing, and then you come back home and is the stuff that you have experienced as well as like your hardline um, political actions is it something that your partner is proud of, is willing to support of, and are they actually thinking like, yeah, demonstrations, amazing, or like, I don't know, occupations, amazing, or is it just like, cool, you do you, but I'm maybe a bit more of a liberal. Like, it's not clear it to me. It says our world views align, but she doesn't want to participate. So maybe she's just like, you know, an armchair around it. Well, okay, that gets fine. me to my third one. Oh, I love this. I feel like I'm your like auto cue. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like, look, surely there must be a way for you to introduce them in a really like soft ways as such, you know? So not necessarily does it have to be, okay, we're now occupying this fucking the workplace or, or like we're doing this like hardcore stuff, like so, Clapton games. I mean, I'm sorry, this we sometimes use this as just like, uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> but, um, so, so, so Clapton is like CFC, uh, an amazing uh, football club that basically is a, as a space for joy and celebration. There's a football club is like, very very um, explicitly anti-fascist and all that stuff but it's full of joy and politics but that's not organizing in politics no, right? it's just fun Saturday so okay so yeah so what we're trying to say here is that basically that you don't necessarily have to uh, have your partner be in those spaces of you doing the actual politics but they can be still very much lured into the 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 the, the sort of the rewards that you get out of that sort of political organizing and uh, I mean I, I will use again a gaming analogy right so again I've also heard about these sort of 
uh, types of relationship dynamics where someone is really, really into gaming and like, is like a really like hardcore gamer and then their new, newly found partner just isn't, just like is not into it. Tell me more. No, no, but like, bit, well, yeah, okay. But I think there are ways of, of, of <laughs> sorry, um, of, for instance, you go to the loading bar together, which is like a, a, an, a pub that is uh, gaming themed in London. And then you basically, you have a night there. And or you maybe you just go to some like random like gaming tournament that also has like a gig on the side. Like that is also like very much a mainstream event that doesn't necessarily have that much gaming. Like there are a lot of like fighting games tournaments that like have grime gigs on the side of them or, or, or esports events that have like lo lots of cool like kind of like celebrity side things in them and or uh, arcades that also have I mean I don't know there's plenty of like couples that just go to arcades as like a funny cheesy date I'm using gaming analogy here as something to to kind of explain that politics can also doesn't necessarily have to mean this like hardcore organizing there are ways of like creating the you know the politics of seduction as we call it right just make it attractive go to some place that is illegal and like hang out there that, that kind of gives you that sort of like we're against the world sort of thing right a couple of places that you mean know in London um, or like I don't know like do a few actions that are a bit out of your comfort zone a bit like kind of rebellious especially since you guys have been together for years like maybe you need to like reenact that sort of thing that you've had years ago that was probably a bit more rebellious and that if you could bring back that magic that we are against this fucked up system that we're in and of course it will be performative it will be it will feel weird at the time and yet it might just bring that some sort of like free spirit back maybe i don't know i agree with everything you said because i read the question like really differently Ooh, so that was really interesting bring it, bring it. <laughs> because like my impression was not that he i mean maybe i've got it wrong it was not that he wanted to like get his like wife more involved in organizing but more that he wanted to try and figure out the balance between like being there for his wife who is political but maybe not active but also doing his activism himself I get, um, and so like my my like relation to this in my head was like when you're dating someone that doesn't really go on demos but does maybe politics in a different way through like blogging or i don't know just like reading books and talking about them and you want to go on demo and i also think that's actually really okay like if you want to go on a demo and you've got like friends and stuff there as well like i don't think you should like your wife and you, you didn't disagree with this but like i don't think your wife or anyone should feel obligated to go there and enjoy that thing just because that is your way of expressing your politics so i think there's lots of different ways of expressing your politics and unfortunately he hasn't talked about the ways in which his wife expresses yeah. your politics except for saying they have the same worldview but maybe but the, like well, maybe. okay so so yeah la so last little thought i don't know it's just like again it seems to me like they have an issue of guilt right so I wonder if the thing that has affected the relationship has been like a less time spent together. So yeah. if it is a time issue, then that's really interesting because uh, on one hand, I want to be like, hey, so you should just have a conversation about like, you know, uh, some sort of scheduling in terms of timings and all that stuff. On the other hand, I want to say um, it's something, it's actually a conversation I had recently with someone. Um, just because you're spending some time on this particular thing doesn't mean that you wouldn't be spending that time on like for instance like your sick relative right like it's just or, or something that would you would be feel really really obligated yeah. to do and that's probably how this person is feeling is that they're really obligated to do this and yet um yeah i don't know like if you are now after 10 years somehow spending like half less time with your partner than you used to of course they're gonna have an issue and that's but totally this is my point okay. like i don't think the onus should necessarily be on the wife to engage with his interests yeah okay. i think the onus okay. should also be on him to recognize that whilst his political mission is important his dedication to preserving because like you know what you're not in a honeymoon period anymore you're 10 years in like he should also recognize if she doesn't want to do x y and z political thing that is valid and maybe he should also like i don't know take her to the countryside for two days like do things that she's interested in because her interests even though they're not political poten potentially are also valid like if she's really into gardening garden with her if she's really into sailing sail with her if she's really yeah. into i'm only talking about my interests what are people <laughs> interested in yeah no no crochet but, crochet with her no, but i don't that's know like saying. yeah i mean in the way we're going to switch but yeah as in like there seems to be a guild that like clearly yeah. they're not engaging in that as much whatever that is so okay Honestly, I don't think you needed to uh, mention that it's all the political work that you're doing here that is so important and you're just trying to make it cool for your partner because sadly, like I've seen way too many men and like that's not you, that's me projecting absolutely but it's just like, 
man, like, I'm doing so much important political work. Like, babes, like, just get on with the program. Yes. I'm actually saving the world. Like, fuck that. No. Fuck that noise. If, if, you you you're abandoning time, your yeah. if you're abandoning your partner, if you're shitty at a relationship, I don't give a shit if you're saving fucking, I don't know, African children. I'm now using an absolute stereotypical yeah. metaphor. I'm very much aware of that. But like, like your partner it shouldn't is your be your partner. partner that like, should be dealing with you now all of a sudden becoming like a better person than you were before. Yeah. In that sort of very, 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 uh, uh, very seen, seenster sort of sense, you yeah. know, because you've probably just met people that you want to hang out with. It's not the mission that's probably getting you out of the house now. It's probably cool people or like a sense of like community that has got you out of that house, you know. But if you're also not simultaneously putting equal time into your relationship, then that's, that's on you. That's and on I you. literally don't give a shit whether they're poli whether it's politics or not. It could be poker. It could be gaming. It could be like gardening, like or whatever it is that people do. Yeah, exactly. What do people do? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I, I think it's it's very sweet of you. And actually, there was this particular wording that I kind of like. I don't think I necessarily wrote it down, but you were like, "Oh, like I really want to keep still doing this like incredible work that massively fulfills me." But you know, I have this issue. It's just like I don't give a shit if it's like incredible work that massively fulfills you, like it or whatever. It's just like it could be waste man work that no one yeah. gives a shit about. And yet, you do have responsibility to your partner. Yeah, your hobbies are hobbies, and like they might be political hobbies, which is great because I hope all put hobbies are political hobbies. But at the end of the day, like yeah, if you're not putting time and care and love into your relationship, then that's yeah. Also, it's kind of like I kind of feel like you're kind of lying a little bit here, and I'm so sorry to be doing this, but like you're saying like we are in a long-term relationship that's extremely communicative. So, but if it was extremely communicative, you wouldn't be messaging us. Like, you would not be answering us. You would have already had this conversation with your partner. Clearly, there is something that is not being communicated. And that probably is either you have spent more time on something else and she just kind of wants you back. Either you are not aligned politically. But this is my question. Like, what does she actually feel? Does she feel neglected? Does she feel abandoned? Is this you projecting, like... Have you had this conversation with her? Because it's one thing if you've had this conversation with her and you're like, I want to keep doing my politics, but my wife wants me to go like crocheting with her. It's another thing if you're projecting this whole analysis onto her without having spoken to her. And like basically like the boring advice is talk to your fucking wife. Yeah, yeah. But again, there are ways of doing this. For instance, I, I, I admitted this quite recently to a lot of my shame in the last episode that like I'm going through a period right now with my partner where um, we're having to kind of kind of like Excel file a bit of our like relationship. Schedule events. Was, yeah. Like schedule events or like gamify almost it. Like basically there's a date every week that we are checking in on each other on three different questions, kind of on a like point scale system, which sounds like a bit sad maybe that we're doing this. I regret, like I, I, I resent that. I don't think it's sad. I think it's actually awesome because we're like, we've been better since then like we have like in the past when we didn't have that conversation so even if you had to like gamify it like that like that's fine as well yeah. so basically like are you reassured, reassured on this point are you reassured on that point like um also like i mean i know i can totally see how it would be your partner that would be asking us the same question yeah right it would yeah. be like hey fucking adore my partner he seems to be away all of the time these days like doing really really important work actually should we move to the, that question a little bit um that is kind of the to the one that is um sorry so this is the um the one where like i've been with my friend forever but like he's like a hero academic and everything i mean it doesn't relate but the, it seems to be like an exact opposite so it'd be really interesting to to kind of juxtapose yeah you. but then we do the videos together sorry it's boring logistical <laughs> Uh, no, no, we'll separate what them. Should we just cut it randomly maybe off there? Should we not put in show the notes that like these two are related? It's a two-parter, maybe. Yeah, but basically the two mirror parter. opposite. I'm the person, I'm the other person. Honestly, the mirror opposite of this question we have just received. Okay. And I would kind of be interested in covering it now. Yeah, let me find it. Fuck it, let's do this. Oh, but then we're missing my favorite one. Oh, not, they're all equally lovely and I love Ooh, you just all. Just the really, really quick points I just wrote down that like I don't have to, I don't think we have do to it, like necessarily, we, but I just have them. So, um, were you political when you got together? That's something to answer because maybe you weren't and perhaps so perhaps legitimately you have different political interests. That's, to me, that would be a deal breaker personally because usually I have found like fairly liberal boys and I make them mad as fuck. Uh, but putting in the emotional labor. 
<laughs> well, politically, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, but maybe to happen the other way around, which is kind of something. But to like, think we shouldn't about. assume that she's not political because he does say yeah. we have similar worldviews. She just maybe doesn't want to go to demos, which is also fine because you yeah. know what? Most HIV demos are boring as fuck. Absolutely. Not to say like, that we shouldn't be like Hong Kong no, style. No, I'm not saying style, we shouldn't man. be doing we should be them. But if she's like, I'd rather snap. like make sure we haven't got bindweed in the garden than go on this demo. I'm not going to be one to judge her. Mm. Uh, Fuck and then invite, maybe invite your political activist friends to your house. You know, be like, hey, dinner party, and you fucking meet them. But, and, and she brings her friends cool. as well. Absolutely. She's like, I don't want it to feel like we are putting this, like, he's going to be like, so, wife. That's, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's like we're, we're doing this thing and this thing and this thing. And all my friends are going to, like, you know and what I mean? And we're going like, to talk about how fucking cool like, we are I just feel like the wife isn't the problem. And I'm scared that we're yeah. putting a lot of pressure on the wife to suddenly be... I did be that at the beginning, but also for him to do labor on that. Well, exactly. But he, yeah, he needs to do labor on the whole situation, it sounds like. like I yeah. just come, I eat my orange, go away. Everyone's eat that orange. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Who doesn't eat that orange? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Norm- vitamin deficient <laughs> people. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, I don't party, maybe. <laughs> don't party? And then... Also, are you wearing on on your wife? Basically, I can totally see also a, a fucking a situation. They come back home and they're like, oh my God, this political shit and this particular demo. And oh my God, cops were like that. And also, did you hear about the legal cases that are coming up? Also, it's probably on the news, but I'm not sure. But have you seen the Tory Huss things? And it's just like, and basically just banging on about it yeah. and not asking them about how they Their are. day was, yeah, what yeah, their yeah, opinions yeah, 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 yeah. are. Because politics are so important. Yeah. I mean, I do that. To you guys, nah, really, really? nah, you don't. You're like, we're gonna watch the hustings, but you're not like, <laughs> and <laughs> and that's more important than anything else. Yeah, no, because honestly, Antiques Roadshow is also just as cool. Yeah, we watched both last night, and I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but basically, like, uh, I wonder if you don't do this thing that I have definitely slipped in myself. It's just being like, we all do. Hey, man, like, the world is about burning. a thing. Well, because the world is burning. The yeah. world is burning, and the we should be very, very explicit about our politics, and we should be really, really. I don't know, like, active about our uh, resistance to that. We should be, and like, I do, I do understand perhaps your frustration that you would like for your, perhaps what to be feeling as, as urgently about this as you are. But maybe she does, but she doesn't want to go on a fucking demo. Yeah. Maybe like, she's like, I mean, yeah. Maybe she's got like a sick twitter account that is like radicalizing everyone yeah like that. everyone has their own different ways of engaging in political organizing and yeah. yours aren't necessarily better and also not just not to say that i didn't also fall into this trap this whole like my quite fairly recent revelation about diversity of tactics it is recent i grew up very much in like from my late teens up to i would say 24 really really believing that there really is the only way to 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 do politics is is to be there out there in the streets which i still think is probably the majority but then i read a bit of gramsci about cultural hegemony and about changing oh my you God, know, i love the, the gramsci awareness. t-shirt it's so good i'm getting like, get one i mean i want to get it okay i'll get can you get me get, get yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. it's basically it's like a gucci yeah it's a, web, uh, it's a sweatshirt that has like a gucci logo but it's have gucci goes gramsci yeah yeah can i can i please have one we can wear them for it's our a show. working class history you should definitely buy a yeah. working class history twitter account and they have their shop it's yeah excellent you uh, get to. We can wear them for our, like full show. A special, a full kind of American. A special. No, but we definitely we should like, yeah. just wear it. A yeah. special. Also, if anyone else wants to give us their merch that we like sell ourselves on too, that'd be great. Yeah, we all wear your merch for the price of a tissue. Tisky should already fucking be. Like, they should be funding us. They should be funding us. Yeah. But anyways, life is unfair. Okay, so shall we do the intellectual question I now? I think so. So, and Not then maybe the- we'll end by then or something. Yeah. How's yeah, everyone feeling? It. Yeah. Cold. But you can totally say. Do you want uh, to wear my coat? Do you want my, ja- want yeah. my jacket? Yours. You I'm wear not mine. wearing it. I'm not wearing I'm it. Yeah. Up, man. Put on, put Just on my put own coat. Like, you know, do it, do it like Kardashian style. Just do that. No. No. No takers for the for the Kardashian coat. Go that cold. Then. Going once. <laughs> going twice. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna end on this. Let's see how people are doing after this one, but I think it will be a really interesting, like, sort of mirror Wait, Do people need a break? Do we just sell drinks? What's the, what's the vibe in here? Okay, Can maybe do you want to pee or something? I mean, I always need to pee, but that's just, like, a me thing. I think, like, okay, let's do this one, and I think it will be fairly quick, in a sense. Okay, this one, yeah, yeah. The, this one. Should okay. I read it? Yeah, go for okay. it. Okay, no, just because I have feelings. I have feelings. Maybe that's what I'm insisting here. Is this okay, Rowan, though, like? I'm okay. Yeah, okay. We're no, okay. just because I'm thinking, like... You have feelings. <laughs> 
No, but we can also have a, we can have a break. I don't need a break. Okay. We can break after this and then see if we come back for the last okay. one. Yeah, the yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Can you roll me one? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm, so sorry. I'm totally abusing our star privilege. Yeah. Yeah. But also she's really sorry, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, we'll share it. By no, I've got my own. Uh, I ain't having no we sloppy seconds. We last episode. We did. Last fair. time there people were having streets and I'd just be like... Yeah, yeah. No, totally. <laughs> also, we're drunk enough now so we can do this. Okay, so this is the sort of mirror opposite, but I think it's fascinating. Hi, I love your guys' channel. That's lovely. I'm going to try to hyper simplify my question for the sake of not sending you guys an essay. I'm a cis hat woman, I guess, in a long term relationship with a cis hat guy. As the years have gone by, it's become more apparent that we differ in terms of our needs for an expression of affection and intimacy. Emotionally, for me, I really need and, and I really need and love to give and receive um, affection and intimacy, but he has far less of a need for that. We're still very much in love and he's happy to accept the affection I give, uh, that I give, um, but makes way, more, way less of an effort to do so himself. He's a very dedicated, serious, intellectual type who is always worried he's wasting time if he's not reading eight, pla eight plus hours a day. I'm not laughing, or you're working laughing. working on a project which I love and admire about him, but it often makes him very emotionally unavailable. For example, I'll compliment uh, how he looks all the time. He tells me I'm pretty, etc. like maybe three times a year. We have sex like once a month at most. Good foreplay has become rare. And he hardly says or does sweet things for me or pumps me up anymore, etc., etc. It just makes me feel sad and a bit taken for granted as a romantic partner. I've spoken to him about it several times, but he always seems to slip back into this. Have you guys dealt with similar situations? Yeah. I, th th I worry that this is becoming a lefties for lefties sort of this show, which is kind of a bit annoying. So we're sorry for that. But sorry like, for our all right viewers. <laughs> we'll have more content for you soon. We are actually doing an <laughs> incel special soon. Yeah, so we are. So oh, yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, incel. Yeah. Well, when we say incel, incel special, it comes with lots of empathy. Empathy. And all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. So. I heart incels. I honestly like. I started making this, making notes on this, and I was like, I can't do this. I have so many feelings about this, and I don't know if I will be necessarily be able to even express those. Mm. Um, because it's complicated. There's a few different parts I want to unpack. So like, yeah, 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 so many things. <laughs> Love it. Oof. Uh, and everyone. So I have. Oh. So I have completely can see how I could have fallen into this sort of like a pattern with some people that have like, thank fuck rejected. <laughs> Oh wait! You think you're the you're the dude in this situation? No. Oh, I'm the lady. I'm the lady. I went for guys like this that I thought will save them, and if they only realize that I am the love of their lives and I'm sexy enough and I'm cool enough that they will just like settle down with me and like realize that the happiness in life is not just that; that's actually also me, and they'll be crazy about me. And um, perhaps they have done that for a couple of years with this person, maybe. And it seems like they fall into this trap. Wait, that's a long time. We don't know how long term that's a problem. Like my only and very very serious point of empathy with the dude, I will say, is just like again, I don't know the class of these people, but I also something I also think something to be said about um, people, not necessarily men in this case at all, actually, uh, that have ambition to be better, become better, have a, a more sustainable income and perhaps they have they have this insecurity that they are constantly should be that they constantly should be learning and are becoming better and if they're not doing that that they're wasting their time and basically it's this like financial anxiety most of the time or like not even financial but like um ambition anxiety that they haven't got to where they need to be yet so they're abandoning that relationship. Yet, I will say that there is a difference between financial anxiety and ambition anxiety because I can totally see like a Boris Johnson character sort of like ignoring his relationships just because he wants to become a prime minister. See, my, my take is that like, I can see that anxiety manifesting in the man, but what that anxiety essentially boils down to is that you think your political work is more important than your relationship work. This and is why it's such a mirror. And therefore, your political work is inherently not feminist. Because if you are saying that like for the revolution, 
I need to be reading these 10 texts a day and writing these like billion page articles that are going to go up on fucking Taylor and Francis and be 40 quid a read. That's your like prerogative. But like, if you're not there emotionally for your partner, you're not a good feminist and therefore your revolution is bullshit and I don't give a fuck. So I think there is a separation between uh, academia. <laughs> yes, but I also think there is a separation between like direct action people and academia people. But this is an academia hard, people question, right? But that's a, those two hardly intertwine. As in, um, I, I don't think, I basically, I will shit on this person even more as in like, I don't think their inherent thoughts is like, how do I bring up a revolution? How do I reproduce myself in this particular world where I can, I can be seen again as someone who has better ideas? Not to oh, say that they certainly. ever get actually be born into direct action. No, they, they possibly have no plans to ever engage in direct action. But they'll write the paper on it with citations to the Lord. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean... As in, it's even more politically de- desperate. My actually. worry is that, like, the... I think, woman? I don't know, the partner... I know, yeah, the, yeah, the person, Is it a woman? It like, seemed, yeah, yeah, I see what she yeah. says. Yeah, it Writing, yes, yeah. yeah. The, the woman in this situation is feeling like... Essentially, like, like in the previous question, her partner is engaging in an activity that has nothing to do with her that takes up the majority of the time and means that he can't be there for her. I don't give a fuck if that yeah, activity is saving orphans. Essentially, she, what she's saying is, my partner is not here for me and he is meeting justifications based on politics. Like, no, I'm sorry, no. I've read Your this and I straight away politics. was like, drop the waste, man. Honestly, like, absolutely way more than yeah. any other question that we've ever read. Like, but maybe I'm also projecting. No, but I'm also projecting, but like, like yeah because what this is the circles we're in unfortunately yeah. oh unfortunately i mean you know we love like academic my content. god the idea that i would partner a dude like i'm sorry i would i would um i would uh give compliments to a dude and would only receive this fuck up maybe i have hugely like high standards but a fucking no, dude, i do like think that, like it is an you know. okay request if you're with a partner for a long time to be like hey like it makes me feel really good if you compliment my outfit or it makes me feel really good if you notice that I've changed my hair and to communicate that to them because they might not realise because they're so like, you know, Marxist and like, who cares about aesthetics? That you don't need that. And like, you know, that's wank. But Gramsci, but, we care about aesthetics. But yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Monsieur Gramsci would tell me my hair is fly, would tell me I look great in that dress and would get laid because of it. I mean, he was, like, yeah. we don't exist in a vacuum of fucking Marxism. Like, I can be a good political activist and I can write all the good texts and I can also want my fucking boyfriend to tell me I look hot in this new dress. And that is not a hypocrisy. That is important. No, I think you answered your own question. And also because at the end of I the... I have a question. I said anger. No, but at the end of the question, they were like, look, I have had these conversations. Like, basically, you. it's not even as being like, hey, have a conversation with your partner. Perhaps, like, that's like a thing. You have had those. They always slip into that same Is it? They actually had pattern. the conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so what I would try and reduce that into like what's going on is like whether it is a professional ambition or whether it's a financial ambition because like I think to me those are very, very two different things. Financial ambition I can totally relate to as in like you feel so insecure in your own class as such that you are gonna and you almost like being like babe just do your own thing for now but i'm gonna get us that house i'm gonna get us that second house whatever that though that's bullshit i'm gonna get us that and then we'll relax and then we'll be there for each other wait 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 and then no no so sorry <laughs> i never use, usually do this but to, to come up yeah, come yeah, back yeah, to me, the ambition me. One. i'm gonna make faces <laughs> <laughs> but and then there's this not say that that's still good behavior because obviously working class people can also be absolutely fucking shit out of relationships but hey um say that myself but um but there is something to be said that i think the the sort of the the the, the ambition question in terms of not to say that ambition financially is not the same thing but like in terms of status status like if you already feel quite secure materially and actually there's not that much that can be brought status wise if they are going to continue in that endeavor like you're already comfortable as is then really it's just about their ego it's not about pleasing you and your material needs it is about them boosting their own ego but it's not entirely about the ego there's not nothing the about financial security in there like not, well, you're I giving mean, them the big benefit of the doubt no here. one no one talks about their class like that a lot of the time well, they should Anyways. and you can with us yes by the way yeah because we'll definitely talk about yeah we love to work class also not to say that like those are not intertwined like i mean uh definitely a person that is um you know gonna also save 
the lady from her perhaps financial but security. I don't give a fuck if you're gonna win a fucking Nobel Prize. If you're shit to your partner, you're shit to your partner. I like city boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, nah, I just feel like this is excuse making. Like, if you're saying that I can't be here for you and I can't compliment you in the way that you feel like you need and that's a valid fucking bit. need maybe because I'm working on my papers, like, no, how, how many seconds of a day does it take to say, hey, you look really good, babe? 1.5 but it comes from a point of insecurity because they feel like they're not giving enough perhaps you were giving to them too much partner. credit i think i but this is fascinating yeah. this is a good conversation to have but this is why we never prepare answers in, in in advance because i guess we do have these perspectives as such like i can see this i guess maybe i'm again i'm projecting i can see how myself if i was in like a in a relationship where i really felt like especially if the other partner is like a bit more middle class than I am, that I would just try to grind through this particular period that I'm in to be like, okay, now I am secure and now can give you what you deserve. And now I'm like established enough, but I have to do this grind. And like, you kind of like, and out of complete insecurity, but because you feel if, already insecure that like, you're no good enough for that person. But even if they had actually like, during the process communicated to you, like, hey, Mariam, I just feel like it'd be cool if you like said I look, pretty a few times a day well yeah like of course. you know what i mean like it doesn't I mean, I sound like i would fall into the space but where it I doesn't sound like she's asking them. for much this is the point like she's asking for quite a small amount of gratitude and like like yeah she would just, all she wants is like a small amount of affection i don't know like it, it's not like can you hang out with me every tuesday it's just like can you notice that i'm attractive and like i don't know yeah i know to be fair and then we if we go boil down to like the sex question like i could not live i could not hang out in a relationship where like sex is only very very like mechanical once a month and then we're off to each other as well as i have been in those relationships and they reach the crisis point and they either get resolved to the point where we like we imagine we find ourselves and we're like banging again and it's great or we break up like it's just it's a thing like it's just so I think that does reach to like a boiling point in a way and I hate to be reducing it to that but like I think the intimacy question and like the the, yeah. the, the sort of the, the I think the more intimacy you have with the, with the other person the more actually you then get on like. and that's the thing like I just feel quite hard line against the dude in this situation because I'm just like yeah if you don't have time to have an intimate relationship with your partner you probably shouldn't be in a relationship like your partner is not just a thing that you can fall back on and pick up whenever you, you feel it's convenient. Emotional like, labor, they're doing yeah. a lot of emotional labor. Of and course, it's like, this yeah. is such a metal show. Like, a girlfriend is not a convenient thing that you can just like, like if you want that, get a fucking booty call. Like, But it comes from insecurity probably that they feel like not good enough for their partner as well. Like I've also fallen into relationships. But you're projecting this, this is not in the question. Again, no, like, I, I'm, me projecting is in the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, absolutely projecting here. But like I've also fallen into the spot sometimes like where um i am cold sometimes maybe to my partner because i feel insecure as to what i am or who i am so like i want to become that better person so that they will see me in like a whole new light and then we begin a new chapter sort of thing which is wrong but no, no, i think that's fine but it seems like he is just prioritizing his political work not his political work to better like it doesn't come through that he's doing his political work to better them it comes through that he's doing his political work to better the future of politics. And she is a second in that dynamic. Like first comes a revolution, seconds comes my girlfriend. And that's the thing I have issue with. But also like they said they're reading academic texts, not necessarily are they like political. That's true. They might just be, be like, like fucking biology. Boring you know? shit. Yeah. Or like quantum physics. In which you case, know what I mean? fuck you. <laughs> fuck no. physics. So this is when you're on disagree, but like, that's <laughs> fine. Cause I think happens sometimes. if anything political acad academia is actually way, le like way more boring than like, mate, if someone could be like quantum physics, babe, or like I know a lot about it. Babe. Yeah, I guess I was assuming it was political work, but you're totally right. It could have just been literally like, I love like looking at amoebas and I want to look at amoebas yeah. 10 hours a day. So fuck you. That's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> Can your amoeba spend some time with me? I, I think we should end with this question. Yeah, no, no, for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, we definitely like even protected here with the whole like yeah, political I completely thing assumed well, it was like, political academia, but you're totally right. To be, yeah. Um, I just feel like there's so many dude bros that get away with being dude bro because they're like, I'm sorry, babe, I'm like writing for the revolution right now. I agree, and yet, and as I say, I think sometimes it does come from a period of insecurity, border like borderline though. 
is them not making you feel like exactly. you are the sexiest woman alive because you fucking should feel that way in whichever relationship you are. Yes. Absolutely. If your partner is not making you feel attractive and wanted and loved, then you need to either bring that up with your partner, which it sounds like you've done, yeah. or dump that I, amoeba filled But it's lad. not easy for us to say that, but like, man, like that's not to say that we don't acknowledge what a fucking difficult it is think it is yes. because also like okay they do eight hours plus a day of reading and then perhaps you have like a time at the end of the day where you guys are drinking wine and they're like explaining to you and it's fucking sexy but as if fuck. that was happening we wouldn't have the question right no but like it's just that and then you get too drunk and then you have don't have sex and that's still a I deal actually, like unlike you i don't feel like the not having sex is like the important part for me but maybe it's because like i'm not very good at sex <laughs> you are no <laughs> not that i know <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's just like it's a, it's a. But like your needs, emotionally and physically, are not being fulfilled, and that is Oops. clear in that fact you asked this question. And yeah, like, and he needs to step up or he needs to step out. But that's okay. So, yes, I agree with that, and yet I think that's a sort of very stereotypical answer that we would be giving. Like, yeah, he seems like a waste man. Yeah, you should just dump him. And yeah, we do acknowledge that this like things are way more complicated. You probably what if you have like a mortgage together? What if like, you know, what if he is achieving that and he's very, very close to achieving that particular goal that will take you to this? Well, next the thing, what I would always say is like have a conversation with him, like tell him that you like I feel like if I told my partner like, hey, I really it's really important to me that you complimented me about like my aesthetics or whatever it is they would take that on board and if he didn't take that on board that would be an ongoing problem like the fact that she said she's already had these conversations is why i'm going so like fucking so nuclear ask, on okay. this that's why maybe a time is not just talking about like asking for a grand gesture what if okay this yeah. is this is your thing yeah i <laughs> this is my thing but basically it's your love language i've been reading about love languages recently because i'm Ooh. a hippie and like there's different love languages some of them are like uh physical uh, like verbal compliments some of them are physical compliments some of them are like gifts and such and like yeah sorry so so i was wondering what if it is that like the same question that you've asked us today literally that same paragraph you send as a letter to your partner being like hey i got to the space where i asked two random girls about this what does this mean to us and that's in a way that's a that's a grand, grand gesture the negative side from you being like i've arrived to this point and and it's time for them to make the grand gesture. Yeah. That would be like a make it or break it sort of situation. Yes. And I don't think you should be like dumping them immediately. I think just bas basically getting them to understand that you have arrived to this point where you're so desperate, I suppose, where you're having to do this. So I quite like us going back to the meta as to why people are asking us these yeah. questions. Because that already is like, that's a, that's a big thing to do. Like to, to write up a question to like two random people that you don't know about this and um, and to be like, hey, this is this is where I arrived to. And you can fuck it. You can even send in like our YouTube answer that you're going very, very soon receive. Well, don't do that. Because I like, said dump him like five times. No, but like <laughs> that's what normal people would fucking do. Like that's it. Like that's kind of the answer. It's just that we are also trying to. Yeah, we want to give him a chance to provide you with the care you need because clearly there are things keeping you in this relationship that yeah. we don't know about that yeah, are valid absolutely. and important. And no one knows what happens behind closed doors. No. Maybe. But then again, like the fact that they even mentioned like foreplay is becoming less of a thing. Like I was like, mate, maybe like the one time they do bang you, it's just like the best That's thing a, in the world. But also like, what does she mean by foreplay? Does she mean she doesn't come and he just comes because a lot of penetrative sex a woman doesn't come? And because that's not okay. Yeah. If your boyfriend is not making you come, talk to him about it, then dump him. It's like, sorry, <laughs> that, that is my hard line. Like. So yeah, I'd like I'd like to think we've given you quite a few avenues here, but it's also it's, I think those those two questions kind of got mirrored kind of in an interesting yeah, way. Yeah, I think it's two too. of them. So uh, <laughs> take what you will from that. Yeah. Shall we? Shall yeah, we call I it think, a day? I think, I think we'll think call so. it a day now. I'm kind of call it a night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for ev everyone for submitting questions. Please keep Thank doing you. it. Yes. Everyone is here. There's a couple of questions that, that we haven't tackled just because it really is a long time. We've already been yeah. here. And but we will. Come. We definitely will. Yeah, yeah. We're actually already planning uh, another show that we'll be recording probably in the privacy of our home, which is absolutely fine. And um, there might be bikini. <laughs> there might be a little paddling pool. But same drink, same vibe. Same drink, same vibe. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much, everyone, that has been yeah. questions. And thank you all and for coming everyone, so yeah, much. Like, so much. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. And...
help us drink the rest of the tiskis and negronis, y'all. Yes, please. Like, actually, if the only way for us to make money is to, like, get that bar sold out. So if there is any way... And even then, we basically only break even. So help us break yes. even. And and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, whatever it is. And Rowan, thank you for this. Thank you, and Marianne. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> I'm in the toilet. <laughs>